I think that would benefit us all, amen? So I think we, uh, we definitely will be looking into that uh, shortly. Let's go to Matthew chapter 3, please. Matthew chapter 3. I want to welcome you here tonight. We're glad to have each and every one of you here in the house of the Lord. Making your lives count for Jesus. Amen. You know, I think every I think every time we are able to come to the house of God and we choose to come to the house of God, it's a it's another check in the wind box for us. As Christians, as individual Christians, as a church as a whole, obviously, but it's a win win. Uh, being in the house of the Lord. Matthew chapter 3, we're going to read uh, 12 verses here, beginning in verse number 1. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leather girdle about his loins. And his meat was locusts and wild honey. There's a diet for you. We call that the woolly mammoth. <laughs> the woolly mammoth diet, I guess. Wow, that's, he, he must, I'm just imagining John the Baptist was just something to behold. Uh, a man's man, so to say. If you can sit there and mow down and on, on locusts and wild honey, wow, that's awesome. Verse 5, then went out to him uh, Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance, and think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Gotta love, you, you just absolutely have to love any tales of John the Baptist. Uh, outside of Jesus, I think if I wanted to meet somebody and, and I could choose who I wanted to meet, I think, I mean, you could mention a lot of great names. You could throw Paul in there. You could throw Peter in there. There's a lot of wonderful uh, people in the Bible, but I, I'd have to put John the Baptist there. I think I would choose that. Uh, remember how miraculous it was. The same angel that came to Elizabeth came to Mary and gave news that you're going you're gonna to have a child. And it was wonderful. And even, uh, and, and God had a special plan for John the Baptist. Even it says of him that, that the, uh, the, he, he had the Holy Ghost from the womb. And he leapt inside when, G, when Mary entered in the house. Like he knew even in the womb. Isn't that amazing? I mean, think about how awesome that that is. And his sole purpose from God was to make the path straight for the Lord Jesus Christ and declare the way in the day of the Lord. That's an awesome thing. So I think I'd like to uh, I'd like to meet him, and I know I'm going to get to one day. Uh, I you know I don't know at what point uh, you know I don't I don't know how all that works. You know if you get up there and they're they're just all just standing there to greet everybody that comes in. I know loved ones are, but 
Yeah, well, at least we assume that. <laughs> uh, I don't know how all that's going to work, but uh, I know eventually I'll get to meet him, and that'll be pretty cool. All right, right, I'm going to preach with the Lord's help on things John had that we need. Things that John had that we need. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the day. Thank you for this time, Lord. Thank you for your word, that it's truth, Lord, to guide us and lead us and direct us and change us. Uh, to be what you'd have us to be. Lord, I pray you'd bless this time and uh, bless uh, this this hour, Lord. Have your will and your way in it, Lord. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Both the Old and the New Testaments are all about the sinfulness of man and the coming of Christ to take away the sin of the world. Christ is the Word, and the Word is all about Christ. You can't separate the two. He is the Word. He brought the Word. The Word, He brought it from heaven, manifested the Word to us. He was the Word of God and is the Word of God. All right, you don't separate those two. And as we we are looking here in Matthew, we can see fulfillment of the promised Lamb of God, which was to take away the sin of the world. Uh, There was the promise of His coming. Now, you know, remember, he, he, there was a promise of him coming first. Way back in Genesis 3.15, the promise was, was laid out. And now here we, we, we see this uh, in verses 1 through 3. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3, the Bible says, The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight uh, in the desert a highway for our God. Now, that's what Isaiah was, prophe- that was the prophecy that was being re- referenced in our scriptures here in the text uh, that we read. So there was a promise of Christ's coming. There was the prelude of his first coming uh, that we see uh, in uh, verse 7. He said, uh, and there had been 400 years of silence between Malachi and Matthew. We know that. No revelations, no preaching, no prophesying. That's a long time. That's a long time not to have preaching and not to have movements and of, of all of these things. So uh, and we see in this time that Judaism is now firmly embedded within the religion and the country of the nation, uh, of a culture of, of the nation of Israel. And now we're finding Pharisees and Sadducees instead of prophets. So that's what happens. When there's no prophets to preach, then you have the falsehoods that like to take up and they like to dress the part and send you on the way that they want you to go. So we see the naysayers approach. And you notice that John the Baptist preached to them just like Jesus did. You generation of vipers. You bunch of snakes. Slippery, stinking snakes. Say that ten times fast. When we talk about Judaism, that's the religious beliefs and practices, the, the way of the life of the Jews. The term was first used uh, uh, by the Jews to describe their religious practice, but it's predominantly modern. Uh, it's a, kind of a modern usage more than anything else. Not really used in the Bible uh, or in uh, you know literature for for the rabbis, it, it's uh, only rarely uh, in the literature of a medieval period. Uh, the word Torah is employed when referring to the divinely revealed teachings and Jewish law and belief. Judaism is uh, used more broadly, uh, including also totality of human interpretation and practice. So, thus, one may speak of a secular Judaism referring to uh, an adherence to those values that were expressed by Judaism but removed from the religious context of it. Uh, So we have that promise of Christ's coming, the prelude to Christ's first coming. We also have the performance of Christ's first coming. Uh, You see that basically in Matthew 1 and 2, those those chapters. uh, You you see that uh, the prophecy was there from the angel Gabriel, we see the virgin concept, uh, conception and the birth of Christ. 
And so those are all very important things, and that's another very important thing going back as we talked about cardinal doctrines. The virgin birth is a cardinal doctrine of the Bible. Without the virgin birth, none of it's good. None of it's good. So we know that that is a fact. We believe it. Uh, we see the predecessor of Christ's first coming, which is John the Baptist. He was the forerunner of the Lord. My, what, what a task. I've often thought about, you know, how, how incredible that it would be that God chose that family. I mean, they were, Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth and Mary were, were sisters. God saw something special in that family. That the angel appeared to them both, promised and uh, foretold of the that this is something that's going to be happening. Now that the difference in the two is that what was done in Elizabeth was not done of the Holy Ghost. That was Zechariah. It was still through the line of man. Okay, but it was sanctioned by God and it was foretold by God, and God caused it to 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 come about between the people, okay? The difference is with, with Mary that that which was placed within her was done by the Holy Ghost of God, skipping the line of man, skipping the process of man, therefore creating a child who would be pure and holy. The Lord Jesus Christ. And so that's why it's significant, even though we see the same angel came, right? Gabriel came to both of them, came to Elizabeth first. Remember, there was six months difference between John the Baptist and Jesus, okay? Then we see that, the, that both of them were told they were going to have a baby. Now, there were different directions because of that, uh, but... It's still the same thing. And just if you just look at, at all the similarities there, it was something awesome. Uh, you know, we've often said how, how amazing it must have been to be the one that God said, you, I want you to bring forth the Savior of the world. I want you to carry, to nurture, to have living in your home raised up in your care, I'm putting the Savior of the world in your care. Wow, hello. What? that? To, to say that you're blessed or honored doesn't cut it. The God that said, let there be light, and there was light, says, I want you. To bring forth the Savior of the world and care for him until the time, fullness of time comes. My, how awesome that would be. But I still think it's, that it's awesome that, that Elizabeth was picked to have the one, the child that would come before him that would make his way straight who would declare the Lord's coming. That was a very, very special honoring thing as well that God would say, and, and all of the same family. Man, I, you have to wonder. I, I've, met and, I've met and been around many just absolutely wonderful families. I mean wonderful families in my life. Been part of a wonderful family. But I have to wonder... Man, what, can you imagine the parents of those two girls? <laughs> what kind of home must they have had? What, what was in their heart that God would look down and say, you, out of everybody? I, I, I just wonder what, I, I have to wonder those things. But he was the forerunner. Of Christ's first coming. And uh, I've got several Old and New Testament heroes that stand out to me. But I don't want to, uh, I just want to look at one of them. 
and that's John the Baptist. Not only is he a hero of mine, but he was highly regarded by the Lord Jesus Christ. And we see in Matthew chapter 11, verses 7 through 15, And as they departed, Jesus began to say to the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets of the law prophesied until John, and if ye will receive it, this is Elias, which was for to come. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. That's what I want to say. We live in the day of plastics, but John was real. John was the real deal. The day uh, of, that, of that day, and the Lord used him to prepare the way for the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, John was not popular among religious folks of that day. You know, it's anybody that's going to preach the truth isn't going to be popular. You're not going to be popular if you preach the real. That's why you've got facades going on all over the world. Because they want population. They want to be popular. They want all eyes on them. But a true minister of God doesn't want your eyes on him. He wants your eyes on him. It's all about direction. It's all about direction. Uh, I was talking, we were talking, my, my dad and I were talking uh, not too awfully long ago about this and how awesome that it is. Uh, and, and I said, you know, the, the whole thing with the Holy Spirit is he's pointing everybody to Jesus. And the whole the thing about Jesus is pointing everybody to the Father. I said it's like a giant holy type of uh, conveyor belt. Because you you start off down here and then you come up through here and then the Holy Spirit gets you on there. Now you're moving, now he's moving you. He's moving you up and then you then you have Jesus there. And Jesus, is his whole thing, his whole message, his whole direction is that we might know him that sent him. That we would direct all eyes to the Father. And even when we pray, he told us, pray to the Father in my name. Right? He didn't just say, just pray to me. He didn't say that. He said, pray to the Father in my name. And so everything, and if you look at the very end of all things, and after all the judgments are passed, everything is done, everything is completed, Jesus gets up off the throne and, and turns everything over back to God the Father so that he may be all in all at the end of it all. He's got the spotlight through all this. Uh, through the cross and the resurrection and all of this and the ministry and, and, and getting us all here through here and all the judgments because God committeth, God judgeth no man but hath committed all judgment unto the Son because it's he that came and bled and died. It's he that, uh, that, that should judge those that, that pierced him. They will look in that day on whom they have pierced. And, it's, and it's, that's God's plan. But Jesus' plan is once it's all said and done, it all gets turned back over to God the Father. That he is all in all. 
everybody's in their place, everybody's doing what they need to do, and, that, and that's what's going to make it amazing. So these, these things we need to understand. But see, you're not going to be popular when you preach the truth, when you preach against people, when you preach against the sin. That's what makes a Bible preacher. I'm not going to apologize. You're not a Bible preacher if you don't condemn sin. You don't preach the Bible then. That's what God called. He called people, and that was, that was John the Baptist. That's his main message. Repent. Repent. He even told them old Pharisees and Sadducees, you better repent. What are you, what are you coming here for? You need bring forth, therefore, fruits, meat for repentance. That's the words he used to them. So needless to say, he was not very popular there. John, first of all, was not great in the sight of men because he was not charismatic. John 10, 39 through 42, Therefore they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand and went again beyond Jordan into the place where John uh, at first baptized, and there he abode. And many uh, resorted unto him and said, John did no miracle, but all things that John spake of this man were true, and many believed on him there. John was a preacher, not a performer. That's what you've got to understand about somebody like that. This, you know, and, and there's too many people out there. That's what they're up there for. They're up there for the performance, for the glory, for the shine, for the praise of men, which is garbage in the sight of God. John was also not great in the sight of men because he was not social. Guess what? He wasn't all up on everybody. He was in the desert. Matthew, in those first three verses, we see that. Those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. See, wilderness, it's a dry or desolate place. It's not a social hub. He evidently was not an active member of the local ministerial association. Mark chapter 1 verse 4, the Bible says, John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sin. Even Jesus was like, what are you going out in the wilderness to see? Somebody in soft clothes? You going out there, what are you going out there to see? And then we got to the real reason, which is you went to go see a prophet, yea, more than a prophet. Because you're going out there to see the fulfillment of a prophecy that was made concerning himself. You're going out there to see who it is that Isaiah prophesied would come to, to make the paths of the Lord straight. You can see that. That's what you're going out there to see. But Jesus, being how he is, always keeps things humbling. He says, but the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Listen, God doesn't want us to put importance like that. It doesn't matter who's, who's what and who's doing what and this, all of this. It, it's the least. The last shall be first. The first shall be last. The least of these. If you look at how many times that the Lord referenced reference that, that even that the things that we do, if you've done it unto the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. That, that there's, a, there's a, an importance there that we need to grasp. Thirdly, John was not great in the sight of men because he was not elegant. Luke 7, 25, in the first part of that says, What ye went out for to see, 
If a man clothed in soft raiment, behold, they which are gorgeously apparel, this rich and elegant one. Okay? Uh, he, wasn't, he wasn't like that. He wasn't elegant. He didn't dress in $2,000 robes. Right? He didn't have the finest of Corinthian leather sandals. He was not elegant that way. People were shocked at the...